Now, us as Ravens fans, we are so used but tired of the media continuously disrespecting our quarterback, Lamar Jackson. They say he can't throw. They say he can't read defenses. They say he's not good enough. They say he hasn't proven himself. They always got something to say. But we know that media is going to be media. But with the players, the guys that actually suit up and are on the field that play directly against Lamar Jackson, oh, they have a completely different story to tell. They always give Lamar Jackson his credit. They always talk about how good he is they always talk about how phenomenal he is but when i saw this quote from logan wilson i was like what he he said come on now man why 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 are you saying you saying that lamar jackson is a running back that could play quarterback but see this is why context is important and you cannot just take a quote and read it and be like Rrr. you need to actually listen Let's do that. I mean, he's, he's, he's a running back that also plays quarterback, I think. He's, he's very dynamic. Um, you just got to contain him as best you can. Um, you know, we'll get more into that game plan next week. So after listening to him say that and listening to those words come out of his mouth, you can tell that he was not being disrespectful. This was another case where the media is just trying to make something out of nothing. He said that he's a running back playing quarterback. And yes, his word choice could have been better and he could have flipped it around and he probably should have flipped it around saying he's a quarterback that could play running back. But you could tell that his comments Unless he's just super petty and just very, very sarcastic and it went way over my head. But you could tell that his comments are not malicious. They're not. So the, he said that Lamar Jackson is a dynamic player and they're going to get into all the game plan for him and whatnot. But you could tell there was no ill will meant by what Logan Wilson said. So with that being said, you know what? Let's jump into this Ravens Bengals preview for week seven. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Engraven here with another video and in this video we here to talk about the game that the Ravens got coming up against those Cincinnati Bengals sitting at four and two Cincinnati Bengals who would have thought I know a lot of Bengals fans probably would have thought but this is just this is a, a good pleasant surprise because when the division is better when the AFC North is better when the teams in the division are that much more competitive it makes everybody else that much better because you got to bring it that much more when you go against each other. Now, before we get into this game, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all. And shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean. And, and if you're a Ravens fan, of course, y'all already know what time it is. But any Bengals fans that come through, y'all already know what time it is, too. It ain't nothing but love. It ain't nothing but respect. So come through. You let us know how you think this game is going to go. But anyway, the Bengals, they are 4-2. and two. And when you look at their record, their record doesn't even tell the entire story because in their two losses, one to the Chicago Bears and the other one to the Packers. So I guess they got a thing with the NFC North that they struggle with. But in their two losses, they have lost by a combined six points. A combined against the Bears. They lost by three against the Packers with all those crazy missed field goals and all that drama. They they lost by three. So these guys have literally been in every single one of their games. Now, look, if you look on the opposite side of the Bengals, the Ravens, they are sitting at five and one. So they have been in every single one of their games because the game that they lost, they lost it by six because of that overtime throw Derek Carr to whoever the receiver was I forget his name but they 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 caught us slipping so these two teams are coming in hot these two teams are coming in confident and these two teams are coming in knowing that they can make some stuff happen and they can rock with anybody on their schedule now when I look at the Bengals Joe Burrow Joe Burrow is somebody that in every single game Every single one. He has thrown no less than two touchdowns. So if he ain't throwing two touchdowns, then he's throwing three. So Joe Burrow has found a way to get that ball in the end zone through the air every single game and multiple times. 
Now, that is very important because Ravens pass defense, they're going to have to be on point. Now, you know, <laughs> you know, Jamal, we, we ain't trying to have him do the gritty on nobody. We don't want that happening. Like him as a receiver, but he can go do all the dancing next week. Them boys, that secondary, they better step it up. They got to step it up because Bengals got all these starting wide receivers all over the field. Like Ravens had that challenge last week with the Keenan Allen and the Mike Williams. And the, the challenge, it, it, it continues this week. So Ravens, and you know, with, with Joe Burrow, him and Jamar Chase, you know he is going to take the shots down the field with him. So safety play in this game, it is going to be, it's going to need to be so big. And the thing about that, thank goodness that Deshaun Elliott is back. Because Deshaun Elliott, the energy that he brings, just his presence, it has made such a big difference. As we saw last week against the Chargers, he brought it and that made the whole Ravens defense bring it as well. Now, um, the running game, Mixon. We know what Mixon can do. And it's not just him as a runner, but it's him as a pass catcher too. And another thing, just going back, because I, I started thinking about screen plays just now. And the Ravens, last week was one of the best games that I've ever seen them defend the screen on. And it was like two or three different screen plays. They were all over it. Now, if we remember, there was a game, a Bengals game, a couple weeks ago with Joe Burrow, where he was like, man, he was like, I know that um, I want to say it was against the Jaguars. I believe, that, yeah, it was. I think it was Thursday Night Football. And their defensive coordinator uh, is he used to be um, the Ravens defensive line coach last year. I cannot remember his name off the top of my head, so my apologies. But Joe Burrow, who is obviously a student of the game from his comment, he said, I, I know he, he came from Ravens. He comes from that Ravens defense. He, he comes from that Wink Martindale defense. So I know that he loves to blitz. I want to say it's Joe Cullen, but I can't, I'm not sure. But Joe Burrow, at the end of that game, he called a screenplay, a tight end screenplay. Because he knows how aggressive that Ravens defensive coaching tree is. Especially that recent Ravens defensive coaching tree. And he took it upon himself to call an audible to a screenplay. And that was, a one, that was one of the big reasons that they won that game. So Joe Burrow, he, he going to be expecting the blitz. And I mean, you know Wink is still going to send a blitz regardless. But Wink in this game, I love how Justin Herbert, he, he said it after last week's game. He said, man, these Ravens, we thought we had them figured out. We, uh, we, we, they, they were showing us stuff that we had never seen them do before all year. They were showing us all these new formations, these new coverages and whatnot that we were, we were not familiar with on film. So Wink... Hey, you did your thing last week. This week, you got to do it again. You, you got to because Joe Burrow and these Bengals, they study you. And then on top of that, you got to see these boys again. You got to play, since they're an AFC North opponent, you got to play them two times a year. Twice. Twice. So let's handle business. With the Ravens, again, there's nothing wrong with the Ravens blitzing. But it's all about the situation. It's all about timing. It's all about just, hey, do you have some guys that you can trust one-on-one? -on -one? If you're going to blitz, you got to try to have everybody accounted for. But when you blitz, somebody's not going to be accounted for, especially the way that Wink be blitzing. Wink said, uh, I, I use two corners on like three or four receivers and I blitz everybody. That's the type of aggression that he blitzes with. So we don't expect him to stop, but... We just expect them to go as the game goes and also to make adjustments. And this game is going to be very important that especially second half adjustments, because there have been some games early on this season where teams, they've they've adjusted to wink in the second half, but he didn't quite adjust to them. Um, now, recently, it's been a lot better. It's been a lot, it's just been stronger, the defense, especially that last game against the Chargers. The, the four and one Chargers were at the time. It, it was just a beautiful thing to see. So, Wink, let's, let's continue where we picked up at last week. Now, another thing. 
because you got guys like, again, Jamar Chase, you got Mixon, you got Tyler Boyd, who us Ravens fans will always be very familiar with, tackling in this game. Now, Josh Bynes, hey, you played for the Bengals last year. And they they felt like, hey, it, uh, it's, it's, it's not you, it's us. We're going to go in a different direction. So they, they, know, they know you a bit. But again, it's up to Wink to put Josh Bynes in positions to where the Bengals don't try to take advantage of any of his weaknesses. Now, Josh Bynes being the very small player that he is, one thing about him is that he's usually always, at least when he's with the Ravens, he's usually always in very good position to make a play. Because he's not the fastest linebacker out there. He's certainly not. But he always finds himself in the right position. And that takes a lot of smarts. That takes a lot of uh, just being a student. So shout out to Josh Bynes. Now, Patrick Queen, you may not be the, uh, the starting inside, the, the Mike linebacker anymore. But, hey, you still going to be out there. So I would, I would love... I would just love it if he could get a sack on his old teammate. Now, I know they ain't been teammates for a couple of years, but still. Just go give him a big hug while he got the ball in his hand. I mean, even if the ball comes out, that'd be fine too. But tackling in this game from everybody, not just Josh Bynes and Patrick Queen, tackling is going to be essential. Again, last week, they cleaned up tackling by a long shot. It was crazy to see how well they tackled last week after what we have been seeing literally every single week. The consistency has to be there. It has to be. It, it, it must continue if this Raven, if these Ravens are going to continue to win. You have to wrap up and tackle. It's, it's a must. Now, special teams, Justin Tucker, continue to do what you've been doing. Sam Cook, hopefully we don't have to see you very often. Now, Devin Duvernay, the kick and punt returner. Continue improving. Continue improving. He just recently started getting opportunities at kick return because all the rest of them have been a bunch of touchbacks. Uh, over the last two weeks, he started getting opportunities. If the opportunity comes, do your thing, doof. Do your thing and, and hold on to the ball. You have been doing that the past couple of weeks, which is great. But just keep it up. Now, offense. Offense. Even though, even though he didn't mean it maliciously, I want Logan Wilson to... I want him to be saying the same thing after the game, too, but with a, a sad look on his face, just a disappointed look on his face, like, man, ugh, that guy Lamar Jackson, ugh. he's just crazy. He's a quarterback that can also be a running back. Got to say it like that. We got we to fix the way he said it. Again, no, he didn't mean any ill will, but the Ravens, all right, offensive line. Hendrickson for the Bengals, he's been balling. He's been, he's been doing his thing. Offensive line, don't, don't let him do his thing. Make him look like a bad free agent acquisition for the Bengals. We know he wasn't a bad pickup, but let's make him look like a bad pickup. Let's make him want to go back to New Orleans. But offensive line, they, they got to be on point, man, because Bengals, they're they going to bring it. And Bengals, again, they, they are a little familiar with Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson, he has gotten the best of them uh, when he's played them. And we want that to continue. And in this game, I know Bengals have had some improvements and whatnot on their defense. Uh, but in this game, with Lamar Jackson, he's had a lot of improvements on his offense. And the Lamar Jackson that Bengals have gotten before in the past, it's not this Lamar Jackson that they're going to be going up against come Sunday. Because the, the Lamar Jackson that the Bengals have gotten in the past – Super run heavy Ravens teams. And they've been successful against the, the Bengals doing that. But this is a different team. Now we know they can run. They, they're not running like they used to run. So let's not get that twisted. They're still running efficiently and effectively, but it's not what it used to be. Obviously, because you don't have a J.K. Dobbins. You don't have a Gus Edwards. You don't have a Justice Hill. Your offensive line is it's a big yikes right now. Well, they, they've been up and down. Had a lot of highs and a little lows and everything in between. Uh, but this Ravens team, continue to do what you've been doing, pass that ball effectively. In this game, I can see Rashad Bateman being that much more comfortable because it's crazy how comfortable he looked last week. And that was his very first NFL game. The dude ain't even played preseason. He didn't even play preseason. And he, just, he, he looked comfortable. Like he had been out there. Him and Lamar, they had a nice rhythm. They had nice chemistry. So now that their chemistry should be even better. 
So I expect him to be out there a lot, especially if Sammy Watkins isn't a goal. I expect Bateman to be out there a lot now. Like last week against the Chargers, I didn't expect him hardly to be out there hardly at all. But they had him out there a lot. Lamar Jackson played 56 snaps. Rashad Bateman played 45. First game. And it's like, oh, okay. So he's ready. So in this game, I expect his snaps to be even higher. So him and Hollywood just wreak havoc. It'd be nice to have Sammy Watkins in here. So we could be like the Bengals. We could have all these starting receivers on our side too. But it's all good. Lamar Jackson just needs to, in this game, continue to use all of your guys like you have been doing. Lamar Jackson has been spreading that ball around, uh, getting everybody involved. Hollywood, now Bateman too. But Duvernay and Prochet, they've been involved as well. And also another thing too, because I'm pretty sure the Bengals are going to do everything that they can to try to, wait, try to take away those deep passes. So with Hollywood, you're going to have to get him involved underneath. Still have some shots ready for him, of course. Um, and also Duvernay, too. I would say send Duvernay. Because Duvernay, he hasn't been having any deep shots recently. I would say catch them Bengals slip and send Duvernay deep, too. Throw it in there a little bit. But um, you, you're going to have to use that underneath game. Now, one thing that I, I appreciate that Lamar Jackson has been doing, and he should continue, them check downs. Take the check down. And he has been doing that a lot. And, and that just, it, it, it bodes so well for this Ravens offense because it allows you to pick up some simple yards. It allows you to pick up simple yards and, and just to keep the chains moving, keep the drive moving, and just get, get those, not necessarily chunk plays, but get those little six, seven yards or whatnot. And it makes the next down that much easier and that much shorter too. So Lamar need to continue doing what he's been doing. And if you want to get another one of your, oh, he is Houdini, he plays on the Bengals. We ain't going to complain, baby. We ain't complaining. But Mark Andrews, <laughs> Mark Andrews, um, he is tied with Travis Kels for, I think they both have 468 receiving yards. But Mark Andrews has his in less targets than uh, Travis Kels does. Do whatever you want to do with that. It is what it is. But uh, Mark Andrews has definitely, he stepped up. In the first game, it was looking like, hold up, where, where's Mark? Where'd he go? We were thinking, like, where's Waldo, but with Mark Andrews. But ever since the second game and moving forward, he's been a lot more active. A lot more active. Uh, so he needs to just keep that going. And again, like I said earlier, Lamar, involve your different guys in the game. Now, with the running game, as of today, because right now, today uh, is Tuesday, October 19th. It's 3.06 p.m. Don't know the status of uh, Latavius Murray yet. So we'll see what happens with him. And he is our north-south runner. All the east-west stuff, that's not him. It's not his style. He's a north-south guy. Uh, his injury didn't look serious, but we won't know till we know. Hopefully he plays, but if he doesn't, then it'll certainly be Le'Veon Bell and Devontae Freeman time and whether they elevate Nate McCrary for the game or they actually say, oh, hey, Tyson. Hey, big head. Welcome back. We'll see what happens. We'll see what goes down. Uh, but the Ravens, it would be nice for them to really get that running game to keep that running game going. Because last week against the Chargers, they involved all three backs. All three backs even got a touchdown. They got Le'Veon Bell, Latavius Murray and Devontae Freeman. But in this game, that the running game, if they can establish that, it would, it would be a beautiful thing. Keep them guys going. And then when everybody, I don't really like the, the little hot potato passing the ball around to this running back, this running back, this running back. Okay, this running back gets it, this running back gets it. I like going with the hot hand, but they ain't really got the hot hand like that at running back. Now, I wonder if they left somebody in for a bit longer, if they could become a hot hand. Uh, and I think right now, out of the three, Devontae Freeman would have had the best chance to do that. As he was on Sunday, he was our best runner. Um, so we'll see what the Ravens do at that position. Um, but offense, one, one of the biggest things in this game, don't get off to a slow start. Don't get off to a slow start because the defense, usually the defense in the first half, they usually, uh, they, 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 their vibe goes with the offense's vibe. But if the offense plays better, oh, the defense will play a little better. So it's important that the Ravens, they get things going early. 
you get things going right away. You cannot come out sluggish. You can't come out all oh, sleepwalking. No, you can't do that. Not against the Bengals. Bengals are a team, like we talked about this in the Colts game. If you give a bad team any confidence, oh, that, that's all they need. They just need a little bit of confidence. And they could take it and run with it. And you saw what the Colts did. They literally took all that confidence and they ran with it. It took Ravens five quarters to beat them. But they did beat them, so that was good. But the Bengals, they're not a bad team. They're not a bad team anymore. They used to be, but they're not anymore. These dudes are sitting at four and two. And they like, and you know, they're thinking like right now, like, ooh, we going to MT Bank Stadium against these Ravens. And if we win, we will be five and two, and we will be first place in the division since we will have beaten our division opponents. Oh, man. We, oh, yeah, we're playing good right now, too. Y'all saw we just, we almost, we could have beat the Packers. We were so close to beating the Packers. And the Bears, we don't know what happened with them. They're terrible. But we, we a good team now, though. So, you know, these Bengals, like, they, they already got all the confidence in the world. They know they can match up. So it's important that the Ravens, they don't turn the ball over, because that's huge, because that's a confidence booster for the opposing team like that. But like I said, score early. Offense got to be there early. I do think Ravens win this game. But I think we go back to old school Ravens football to where it's stressful, it's dramatic, everything is crazy, nothing is normal, and it's just because I would, well, I would love for the Ravens to blow the Bengals out. I would love it. But I feel like the Bengals, they, they coming on strong. And the Bengals, they like, hey, we trying to show we can hang with these boys. We show we could, we took care of the Steelers. Oh, yeah, they, you know, that's cool. Browns, we, we could hang with the Browns. Oh, we still got some work to do with them. But Ravens. Ravens been having our number for the most part recently, well, especially under Lamar Jackson, under Joe Flacco. But under Lamar Jackson, yeah, they, they, they've been having our number. So, you know, Bengals are just, I don't want to say desperate, but they almost might be for that first win, that first victory over Lamar Jackson and these Ravens. Now, while I think it's, it's definitely possible that they get it, I don't think that they will this Sunday. I don't want them to this Sunday either. But I think the Ravens win, like I said, by a field goal. And if it's more than a field goal, I think the Ravens win by maybe like four or five points. I, do, I think this one is going to be close. I really do. And and I'm just preparing myself for the, the normal heartache. I mean, not the heartache. No, no, no. Sorry. The, the normal headache and the craziness and the, this, the insanity from the games that we've seen uh, for most of the Ravens games that we've seen thus far. Besides the, the Broncos and the Chargers, I'm ready for all the other stuff. And I'm, that's what I'm expecting. I think it's going to be a really good game. I think it's going to be an extremely tough game for both teams. Both teams present their challenges. Both teams have their strengths. Both teams have things that they do very well. But I think in this game, the Ravens will do them just that much weller, even though that's not even really a, a word. Uh, and I think they have a couple more veterans that make a couple more veteran play. Because Bengals still overall, I mean, they got some veterans here and there, but they, they overall, they're still a pretty young team, which is nice for them, especially sitting at four and two, especially for the long term future. Because it's like, oh, man, we a young team and we we starting to get it now. We starting to get it. So, again, this is nice for the division. This is great for the division because it makes the division that much better. But I, I think Ravens squeak it out uh, in this one. Like I said, I think it's going to be by three. But at the most, I think the most they might win by would be like five points. I think it's going to be just just so, so, so close. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And we out.